My story started when I found Jesus at the age of 17 years old, and today I stand and I continue to share the gospel everywhere I go, where's my calling and where's my purpose, where I always be, where I always belong to share Jesus. And I know in my heart that I have a plan. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a story. If I can tell you my story, it's been a battle, it's been a journey. It's always been a struggle every day. Every day I keep my head up. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, that God's word will lamp to my feet and the light to my path, knowing that Jesus is the only one to give me strength. I always pursue greater fame and always find opportunity to keep searching for that journey that God placed in my heart. I always continue to be strong. I may be disabled in the world, but I am able to God. What does it mean to walk with God? Have you ever stopped to ask yourself? What if you couldn't walk? What if you couldn't see or hear? Would you still try? Meet Jared. This is the way he sees and hears the world. He often has to rely on people to get around, but spends most of his time walking. He walks not by sight, but by faith. And this is his story. Many of y'all may not know Jared. Jared is, is one of our, our young members here at this church. and He is a young man who doesn't let his ability determine his capability. Many of y'all may not know this about Jared, but he is legally, by the state of Texas, he is legally blind. He is deaf on one ear, and he has a hearing aid to help him hear a little bit on the other ear. He carries around a large magnifying glass to be able to read the Bible or read even the, the, the things on his phone. He has a bad back. He cannot drive, but he doesn't let any of those disabilities keep him from pursuing the passion and the dreams that God has placed in his heart. I want to revamp the, the social media part of the Youth Connection Ministries, maybe update some of our info. What about um, grateful for greatness? I'm oh, sorry? Grateful for greatness. They both sound good. No, no, that's uh, the actual title. Like, grateful, like I'm thankful for greatness, like awesomeness. You should uh, let the team know. I'll let them know. But I've been getting a lot of testimonies 
few messages from a couple of friends that follow the video ministry. Good. They really, uh, they really enjoy watching the video ministry, even friends from other countries. I know on YouTube you can see the demographics of where your viewer is watching, such as what countries. I was wondering if Facebook had a feature just like that. Um, I noticed that YouTube, well, I don't know, if it, um, you can change languages. It, it, like maybe the the youth 101, they don't prefer English, but rather have it in, in Spanish. Um, actually, my aunt has been telling me, hey, why didn't you guys shoot the videos in, in Spanish? We're, <laughs> we're waiting for you to shoot in Spanish. Like, well, we all, well, add the subtitles. Well, so you know, even my other friend, you know, that he doesn't know English very well, <laughs> very well. Well, he wanted to see if we can do the language in French. I'm like, uh, French? We can put French subtitles. Um, it'll, it'll take us like three days to decipher it. Well, um, well, I guess the more we work on communication, the more we can get a lot more upgrade in the video ministry. Oh, we might as well just learn Chinese, then, shouldn't we? I can, we can make an arrangement. You think they have Chinese subtitles? This is my good friend Adriana. I met her so many years ago. She's always been very faithful and always encouraged me. We arrived to the library to take some photo for Youth Connection Ministry. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. So what, I know we have a mission statement, I know we have goals with the YCM, but what are we going to put on our banner? I think we can get more ideas, but we can share this, you know, to our, to our, to our Youth 101 friends in the ministry. Maybe we can give it some thoughts or some ideas. Yeah, I, I think I like that. Make something and then have them vote on the best ones, and then from there we narrow it down to just one. Mm, I like the idea, cause the whole idea about the ministry, it's not just me alone. Everybody's welcome to bring their ideas and their thoughts you know, into the ministry to make it more like upgrade. Even yourself, you know, how you join the ministry, you, you did so much upgrade, you did a lot of great ideas. It really, you know, captured a lot of audience attention on, on the pages. Yeah, these look really nice too. Uh, the pink and purple. Mm. Oh, a match of ministry color. So, um, last week I was kind of afraid that um, I, I want to go check the mail in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that, you know, something happened to my eyesight when I went outside. Really? And I felt very, you know, you feel very hard for me to go outside at night. And my eyesight, something would happen. You know when you're in the you know in, in the dark room when you turn up the light it's all dark your eyesight dark uh, to blow up when you turn on the light when your eyesight goes down it's the opposite so I'm, I'm kind of afraid of, of losing my vision of wanting maybe you got some uh, word of encouragement or advice you can get me. So you're worried about your eyesight all the time. The reason that we have eyesight is so that we can see the world around us. Um, it's kind of like what we're just doing right now. I have my camera, take a picture, and we just see everything how it is. In Isaiah 40:31, it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. That can even be one of our themes for the videos. What do you think? I like that Bible scripture. Yeah, for right now, um, I'm doing daily eye drops mm -hmm. every day, and it is helping, but only like temporary. So now what I want to try to do, I want to go visit the eye doctor to see if you have any recommendation. As far as my glaucoma is really hurting me. But, but like I said, I have to walk by faith and not by sight every day. But if I have it, we'll hopefully um, you can just pray for me or something. We'll go inside and check out some books. I'll pray for you. Well, 
What was the name of that book that you pick out? Hawks and Owls of North America. It's got my pictures. Mm -hmm. Let's see, there's any pictures here. I'll check that one out. No, I can't see the picture. Oh, maybe oh. you can read it to me. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see. That looks like a good passage. Okay, so this one's about the bald eagle. Oh, uh, the Bible talk about the eagle. Mm -hmm. An adult bald eagle is a spectacular and majestic bird. It has a gleaming white head and tail and a dark brown body along its bright yellow feet, legs, and bill. Here's even a picture right here. Check it out. Can I see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. No. The eagle is one of the most majestic birds. It mentioned so many times in the Bible. And I'm, I'm so glad that I find from inspiring the foolish eagle that really, you know, helped me to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Like even in the Bible faith, that um, we have strength like the eagle. We mount up like wings. So it's, it's not, I really appreciate the, the paragraph, Adriana. I'm very glad that we're here in the library. I just feel that there's just so much, you know, it can get me. And I, you've been struggling a lot with my eyesight. I like the story how Jesus healed by the mayors. And I, I believe, and you know, I am able to God. I believe that Jesus can heal me just like how he, he did miracles in the gospel. Yeah, just because it was, just because it was 2,000 years ago or so, it doesn't mean that God doesn't. His works still live today, just how his, the truths are still relevant today. His works are still here today. I believe that God can do all things for those who put their faith in Him. And I, I can do all things for Christ and give me strength. And even today, I, I keep my head up knowing that there's a, a purpose, Adriana, and knowing that all things are possible with Him. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that no, there's, there's power in prayer. There's power in Jesus' name. There is. His name is power. I can pray for you. I'll pray for you. All right. Lord, we are gathered here today in your name. We would like for you to hear our gratefulness. Thank you for letting Jared be able to see what he can see. And also, thank you for letting us be able to meet together and speak about you. Lord, we would also like to ask you to please heal Jared, to let him see, Lord. Let him see in order to be able to lead others to you to continue his ministry, to continue to walk in your word, continue growing, and to help others grow. Amen. Amen. You know, I really appreciate that prayer. And I, want, I am going to keep you in my prayers. The Lord just show me, you know, the Lord just show me that you have a lot of great doors open up for you in the future. And it's just, just an exciting way what he's doing in your life. You can continue to put your trust in him. Mm -hmm. Well, about 10 years ago, when I was 17 years old, I struggled with speaking. I had a speech, a, a speech impediment. I couldn't talk right. People would make fun of me. Bro, I can't understand you. Think about I struggled with my, you know, the way how I talk. They were taking speech therapy classes on special ed. And then I struggled with my, with my, with my back. My, my, my surgery came back then. I, my back would be tilted and I would walk very crooked. A lot of people would make fun of me because I can't put my back straight because I was going to the office. But then later the Lord started working in my life. Today, you know, you see me standing straight. You see me, you see me talking, you know, with really good communication. Well, I know, if, you know, I'm, I'm learning to talk slow. <laughs> but yet God continued because why? Jesus washed my feet. Jesus healed me when my circumstances. Jesus healed me when I'm going for battle. Jesus healed me when I'm going for a lot of you know, trouble in my life. 
Today, you know, I'm 27 years old. Today, I continue to, to share Jesus across the Rio Grande Valley. To, to know that they're teenagers, that there's hope for you. There's identity for you. I like what left me in a bottom of it. They're perfect for your life. Earlier in the afternoon, I was really grateful for my good friend Adriana for giving me a ride. If not for Evie, and it's always been a struggle looking for a ride, but God is so faithful. He always fan and played people in my life or helping me invest into time. Always giving me ride for destination where I need to go. Even though I have help, most of the time I invest my time walking, searching, going to different locations. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ear will hear a voice behind you, saying, This is the way, walk in it. I am on my way to go visit my friend Derek. We haven't known each other very long. Something in my heart tells me to go visit him, like a voice or a whisper. Is Derek home? He's not at the moment, but I'm glad you stopped by. I wanted to see if maybe you can talk to him. He's been in a really down situation lately, and I've been trying to get him to pray to God, but his faith isn't that great, and maybe he might change his mind if he hears it from you. Absolutely. I would like to talk to him. Okay, thank you. Do you have some time? Maybe you know I can talk to you a little bit to, to encourage you. Maybe I have some really good Bible scriptures you can give him. Yes, of course. Shall we have a seat? I just wanted to share with you. I will be keeping you and your husband in prayer. I want to encourage you that the Lord put in my heart that you are a woman of God. You have so much confidence, you're so faithful, and there's something that I want to share with you and your husband that will, it will help you, you know, for him to come to Jesus. I don't know if you want to look at the scripture here, if you want to, in Psalm chapter 25, verse 4, 5, and 6. It says, Show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. The Lord just wants you to trust Him. He's guiding your steps every day, and He knows that you're, you're putting your effort in your heart for your husband, Derek. And I know Derek has a future. The Lord will always do, find ways to, to bring him to his father, Jesus. Well, I want to encourage you. Would you like to pray? Yes, I'd like that. My loving Heavenly Father, Jesus, you love this man, Derek. Father, wherever he is right now, I pray that you protect him. You watch over him. You know his heart, Father. I pray for his faithful wife, for her faithfulness, for her to continue to keep pressing forward. Thank you, Jesus, for an amazing day that we keep our, our faith and our trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, pretty really good talking to you, Kayla, but keep thank me updated you. with, with uh, Derek. Yes, thank you so much for praying for us. And I'll let him know uh, to call you. I appreciate it, though. Well, you have, a, you have a good day, then. Have a good day. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 There is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off.
When I was in 8th grade, I played football here at Deleon Middle School. I remember all the memories. I remember all the teaching and leadership I learned from Coach Garfield and Coach Fuente. Looking around the field, it's just the time that I learned how to play. It was a struggle. It was really hard knowing that I was the smallest player in the team. I never given up. I always been very perseverant. My favorite memory was winning different champion. Me and my team playing against Lincoln Middle School homecoming at Nikki Rock Stadium. It was fourth quarter, we were losing our defense and I recovered a fumble. In the next play offense, they, they, they made a touchdown. We won different champion that year. I continued to keep moving forward and always looking back to my past. I didn't know Jesus that time when I was in middle school. But yet I never given up hope and I never given up what, what, what my calling was. Today, I'm very excited. I am on my way to visit my high school, Nikki Rowe, to speak to the football players. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things for Christ who gives me strength. I have the honor to play here for Nikki Rowe High School. It was very challenging, going through a lot of difficulty, yet I still have an opportunity to put on a helmet and play football. You know, when I was starting, Jared, when I was starting this morning, I was just thinking about today, and John the Baptist came to mind. Now, I don't know if you know, but John the Baptist, he dressed differently, he looked differently, he even talked differently, and there's something that happened to John the Baptist's life. He was out in the wilderness, and it said that he was a voice crying in the wilderness. I want you to hear this. I believe what you're about to hear from Jared's life and hear about your life, that you're a voice to this generation, guys. Are you going to add to the darkness or are you going to add light to where darkness is at? And I just want to encourage you. I was telling my, 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 my nephew, Ethan, that you're not an echo, man. It's not a generation that's going to be an echo. You're a voice to this generation to do greater things. And that's why I believe in y'all guys. I truly believe, man, it's not how many people are here. I just, that you're here, that you can make a difference in this generation. I am on my way to the locker room to give a word of inspiration as we get ready to play La Cruya. <laughs> This young man was a warrior, still is a warrior. He was a part of our family when I was coaching back in 2006. Okay, now he's a he's, he's a survivor. He works hard. He's going to give you a couple of words of encouragement. Okay, so just give him give him your undivided attention. Derek, got to give him a round of applause. It's always great to come back to the legacy of a football team since I was a sin, and I'm always going to be a warrior, warrior of heart. I want to give you guys a word of encouragement, and I believe strongly in the UFC, and I believe you guys are going to do a lot of greater things. You know, I love the story about Act 28, about a story about how Paul was putting the wood in the fire. A lot of times we put a lot of dedication, we put a lot of hard work, we put a lot of our time in bed every football game every week. About going in the fire like, all your time, and suddenly you have a biker that comes out of a fire and bites you know, you know, you bite your spirit, they bite your confidence. And that's what, 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 what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to destroy you know, your confidence. I'm going to hurt you. But remember, you got fire in your time. You're a warrior. You're not born to be a legacy. You're born to do greater things. Every time you put that wood in the fire, that biker will come out and bite you. going to bite you. I want to encourage you tonight to count to free on next week's fire. Once you're free, fire. Come on, guys, be it. Once you're free, fire. Do not let that fire destroy you. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not be strong. You got a lot of confidence. I believe you got to win every single game. I believe you got to beat Matt Cat and Must Bank. If you got fire, you got have what fire? Fire. Come on, be it. Fire. Be it. Fire. Do not let that fire destroy you. Keep that in your mind. The fire will destroy you after the game. You got fire in you, though. You got a warrior in heart. You're all. Put it in your mind right now. 
We started the wish rig here at home. We want to continue it tonight. Continue the wish rig all the way through. We only got one more away game. That's next week. But we continue for to, to, for us to be stronger and receive and Lord, I pray for the game tonight, that the, watch both teams tonight will be faithy. Father, we just continue to keep prepping forward, that I pray that each of you pray to, to show great work and dedication and show that for the community, community, the city, and, and the high school. And we continue to keep prepping forward for the female father and we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that you give them the, the strength that the aggression that they need to put the game tonight, Father, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, the will be done, and praise is the same. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us our temptation, and deliver us from evil. Fight like warriors tonight, man, all the way through. Praise God! my friend and little bit for Lina singing the national anthem. All right, here come your Nikki Rowe Flodif and the Nikua Warrior beat Guluya 21 to 14. I was very happy to give him a word of encouragement to get the player fired up for the game. Today was a good day. Hey Derek. Hey Jared, how's it going man? I'm doing good, yourself? Good, good. Hey listen, uh, my wife told me you came by a little while ago so I'm just returning your call. What's up? I was wondering if you uh, maybe want to catch up or maybe we can go hang out. Yeah man, uh, I'm actually glad you called. 
I kind of need someone to talk to. Got a lot of stuff going on, you know. Uh, how's tomorrow sound? Sound good, man. I'll be there. Just let me know a time or, or we can meet up. All right, bro. I guess we can meet uh, at the park, 2 o'clock? Absolutely, man. I'll be there. Okay, see you then. Peace, man. Bye-bye. Biff is my friend Derek. We haven't known each other very long. We became friends very really quickly. But I'm always been concerned about his faith. He is a good man, a very smart man. But he relied too much on his own human understanding. I know it's going to be a battle having a conversation with him. I'm always going to rely on the Holy Spirit to guide me with wisdom. And know that I can do all things for Christ to give me strength. Hey man, so I just wanted to talk to you, I guess, because I have some questions about, you know, the whole God thing. Uh, I've been wanting to learn more about it, but I just... I guess I see you and you have like this incredible faith, man, and I don't know how, how I can get that. So, what do I do? Well, a lot of times when you go back to the scriptures in John chapter 20, when Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, you see me, but you believe. But blessed are those who have not seen me yet believe. A lot of times that, you know, when people are searching for their, their faith, they're searching for identity. A lot of times they have doubt and just have questions and the thoughts, knowing that they don't know what direction to go. Now, how, how, how I do it in, in my life, God helped me a lot through my disabilities and struggles. But if you say, okay, God is healing me, God is the reason I'm getting better, uh, to me, how can I put this? I, I guess you see God healing you, I see a skilled doctor. You know, I see prescription medications, I see healthy living, I see these are the reasons why you're getting better, but you see God. How do you, how do you do that? A lot of times that, you know, we want to see evidence. We want to see proof that there is yeah. a God, there is a higher power. <laughs> That's right? what I'm saying. And I myself, you know, if we go back to the creation, how did everything start it though? A lot of times people have theories of a big bang or people have theories, you know, how did everything start the ocean, you know, the atmosphere, the land, the animals, but all because of God's spoke. Because a lot of times that we don't, we can't hear. That's what the question is because of faith. A lot of times, you know, professors and you know people want to challenge that because of faith, right? Right. But a lot of times that we we live by sight. We, we want to bait everything with our sight, though. Going back to your to your question, there, we want to see that God is real. But God is real. How, how can you explain that God feeds the birth every day? God heals a child in a hospital. God helps. People that, that are searching for that help every day. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up. You talk about science, right? A lot of people try to explain the creation of the universe, Big Bang, all that stuff. Well, I'm a man of science. That's what I've always believed. I mean, I'd like to think that I'm a relatively educated person, but to me, it just makes sense because it's logical. You know, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C, that kind of thing. Like, uh, the miracles in the Bible, for example. You take the water, right? You know how they parted the Red Sea? Yeah. How, how they just walked across a land bridge and the ocean opened up. Mm -hmm. Don't you find that kind of hard to believe? Kind of amazing, I guess? A little too amazing? How do you explain the miracles in the Bible? That kind of stuff. How do you well, just know that it happened? The story of that reminds me of a story how there were disciples that were in the boat and Peter, who, stood, who stepped out of a boat who walked on water. And what happened that a lot of times that we are so contempt being in that boat, but a lot of times that we challenge ourselves to know that if we use science or we use, you know, the reality of the world. But people want the reality of the world, though. 
Jesus wants to challenge us because our heart, and naturally we were born into sin. Our heart so far away. Wait, wait, wait. You said Jesus wants to challenge us? Yes. In what way? Because Jesus wants a relationship with us. The Bible said that he's knocking the door of your heart. I like that story how the shepherd, he calls the sheep. The sheep know his voice and they follow him. Okay, well here's an interesting question for you. Did God create science for us to use? Or did science create God? God created science. He created all things. Everything that he created. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All things that he created because of him. Let me ask you this. Can you remember a time in your life that, you know, it got, it got you so angry, it, it got you felt distant from God that you just don't want to believe in him anymore? Oh, uh, man, that's a good question. You know, and I wish I could say yes, but not really. It was never really one moment for me. It was more like a collection of things, you know? Science, of course, being one of the biggest things that, that I prefer to cling to because it makes sense to me, but it's... It's more, I never had strong faith to begin with. I was the kind of person that was just sitting in church going through the motions because everyone else was, you know? Like, I wanted to be a part of it. I see these people, they're so happy. I mean, they're dancing and they're singing, and, and when you talk to them, no matter when it is, they're always in a good mood, and, and I wanted to be like that, but for the life of me, I didn't know how to get it. But that's why I'm seeking God. That's why me, a man of science, is seeking God, because I feel like my life will be better if I can understand this thing. And I don't like there being something that I don't understand. It bothers me. That's what happened in my own life. Because I never understand why did God make me this way with so many disabilities and struggles. Exactly. And what, do, what, do, what does your faith tell you? See, there was a time that, you know, I asked God, why you made me this way? Why in, in the world you made me, you know, the way I am today, illegally blind, totally open? and hard of hearing and it took that one moment that I finally understand that when Jesus spoke to me in the Bible he said that he used the the weak thing to shame the, the strong he used the um, foolish to shame the wise that's logical because a lot of times I myself that you know I, I'm you for his glory and I believe that he can use you so you are created, you are designed for a purpose, you are his masterpiece. And when you, you believe he can use me? Yes. A guy who barely believes in him. Well, look at it in the story. Did you know that guy used a lot of troublemakers in the Bible for his glory? Well, he's got his work cut out for him then. I, I, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I said he's got his work cut out for him then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. He's knocking in the door of your heart. All he wants is to have a relationship with you. Do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? No. No, man. Really? No. I. Well, I mean, I guess I don't see a reason to, you know? I don't see that's something I need to do right now. I mean, why? You know? I can't. I'm sorry. No. You need Jesus, bro. He's the only one can give you that joy that you're looking for. He's the only one can help you. If you don't accept Jesus, you're going to be, you know, lost. Just like our sheep. It's no, always lost no. from the shepherd. You're always saying that. Oh, I'm sorry, man. You don't have to apologize, man. I'm just tired of hearing it from everybody. You know, it's... I, I am in charge of my future. I, I create my own life. That's it. I take care of me. You know? I just... I appreciate what you're trying to do, man, and thank you for the talk. But I think uh, I think I need to think more on this. I just I've, I've, I can't do this right now. I'll catch you later, man. I like one. Later. My loving Heavenly Father, Lord, you love him so much, and Jesus, I pray that you guide his heart. I pray, Lord, that you, you they can capture him. Jesus, to know that you have a purpose for his life. 
I know Jesus that he'll come to you one day. He will surrender to him. And I know Jesus there's a plan and a future for his life. Thank you, Jesus. And I know you can do great things. Amen. As I was leaving the park, I saw in the distance a girl on the bridge. Something like a whisper tells me to go talk to her. Hey, friend. Hi. Well, my name's Jared, and you don't know me, but I just want to share something with the Lord put in my heart to share with you. I just want to show you that you have a purpose. You have a destiny. The Bible says that God is about working your life through the desire of your heart. A lot of times that you can't see tomorrow, next week, or next year. Because you can't see, but God is working behind the scenes. He knows the struggle you're going through. He knows that you, you invest so much time, you know, looking and searching for that, you know, that dream that you're, you're pursuing. I just want to let you know that Jesus that loves you so much, He designed you as a masterpiece. I just want to encourage you that you are you have greatness in your heart, that Jesus Aww. loves you so much. I just want to encourage you, friend. What's your name? Jared. Well, it's really nice to meet you. I'm Likewise. Sorry. It was good talking to you. Thank I'll see you. Around. Yeah, that, that means a lot. Well, are you a pastor? Mm, well, I'm more like a, an evangelist. I do a lot of youth ministry. I invest my time to help teenagers to find a purpose and a calling in life. So how did you get all of this started? It, it all go back to the beginning that I didn't know Jesus in my lifetime. I was Catholic and I struggled a lot with my disabilities, you know, going through surgery and, you know, you know just having a lot of challenges, though, and yet when the age of 17 years old, when I was at Nikki Rowe High School, I found Jesus. Because of Him, I found strength. Because of Him, I have purpose. And I always want to encourage all the other teenagers to find their purpose in, in their life as well. I really think that's inspiring to a lot of people, uh, the work you do. Uh, I personally don't take in uh, Jesus as much as I should, but from uh, the people that I that are Christian, um, they just seem a lot more happy with their themselves, and it's really good to be reminded of that. Earlier today, I was just talking to a friend, asking him a question. He wanted to accept Jesus, but I want to ask you the same question: Do you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? I think I will accept Jesus into my life now. I would like to guide you into prayer to accepting Jesus as a permanent Lord and Savior. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you. I come to you. Lost. Lost. Jesus. Jesus. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I accept you into my heart. I accept you into my heart. I believe in my name. I believe that in my name. It's written in the Lamb Book of Life. In the Lamb Book of Life. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. I surrender my life, Jesus. Now use me. Now use me. And guide me. And guide me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You accepted Jesus in your life. So I know it's kind of late right now, but I'll talk to you soon. So, um, yeah. Well, God bless your friend. Good Thank meeting you. Thank you. So nice to meet you. God Likewise. bless. Likewise. Take care. There's no limit with God, amen? But it's not to lift up humanity, it's to lift up Jesus. Because at the end of the day, it's winning souls, amen? When we allow the enemy to weigh us down on our purpose, then we're missing out on the greater reward is winning souls. See, you, we've allowed the lie of the enemy to weigh us down. So you're so worried about yourself that you forget to do the greater thing. Surrender like God five and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you do that, great things happen. I've always said this, that the God of the universe looks down upon humanity 
to see if there's one that's willing to understand and walk with God. Amen. I mean, sometimes we feel like we're defined by the things that we do. No, you're not. If you study the Word of God, no one's been perfect. Everyone's come short. But the Bible says if we repent of our ways, He is faithful and just to wipe away our sins. Amen? Amen. He says in the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, He says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, that He will hear from heaven, you know what, and heal us. Everybody say heal. Heal. It's powerful. And that's why Jesus said you must carry your cross every single day. Hey, baby. <sighs> Why are you taller than me? Because <laughs> you're heavier than me. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> <sighs> what are you reading? Broken No More by Marianne McMillan. Broken No More? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. I like the sword. It's very nice. That is cool. We gotta get one of those. <laughs> is something wrong? Yeah. I guess you can read me like a book. Uh, I had a conversation with Jared today. You remember Jared, right? That, that little guy is always walking around the valley yeah. talking to people like he's known them for a hundred years. I don't know how he does that. Nice guy. Great guy. Love it. He can just walk up to someone and strike up a conversation. But uh, something he said today has really, really been bothering me. And just the whole conversation in general, I guess. It's like uh, he's so convinced that what he believes is true. Like uh, the whole faith thing, you know? And, and, and specifically, he said that Jesus is knocking at the door to my heart and he wants a relationship with me. What am I supposed to do with that? I mean, I don't know. What does that even mean? And I just, I don't like that I can't understand something. I mean, I can't even say he's wrong because I don't really know what he's talking about. But at the same time, like, I want to debate with the guy, but I got nothing. No. Well, maybe you should listen to him, babe. He is a man of God. I should listen to him because he's a man of God. What about science? Well, any questions that you might have in reference to God or the Bible, he would be able to answer. That's, that's a good point. Of course, that is why I talked to him, but I thought that, I thought that I'd feel triumphant, you know, that, that I could win the conversation, but I don't feel like I won. I feel like I lost. No, something doesn't add up. This guy's too nice. There's got to be something wrong with him. Nobody's that nice. And why does he even care about, he really, he tried, you know what he asked me? He asked me if I wanted to accept Jesus into my heart. Who does he think he is? Well, he cares because Jesus cares. God cares. So you're saying he... He cares about your life. Cares about, about you getting life. saved. Well, you know, I know, I know you might believe that, but I, I just think... I think people... I don't think people are genuine. I don't think people show you who they really are. He's hiding something, and I'm going to find out what it is. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk to people he knows. I'm going to get my camera... That way when I'm interviewing people, they won't know why I'm asking questions. It's brilliant. I'll see you later, babe. Okay, bye-bye. Jared has been with us through every step. He's seen us grow as a band, as, as, as Christians, and he has spiritually been lifting us up, and he has invited us to different conferences, and that has helped us grow, and we love the fact that we stay encouraged because Jared's always there to tell us that we can do it, we can be better, and he's always, he's always been a great man of God and we've always been thankful for that. With his physical eyes, Jared walks in, in, in almost like in the shadows, that's what he sees physically, um, 
but with his spiritual eyes, he walks in so much light and, and with so much power. I don't know if he realizes that, but um, when he walks, like he he has so much light that surrounds him. He's so determined. He's very determined. I mean, he has um, he ha he does have a, a disability where he's he's legally blind, so he does have difficulty seeing. Um, has uh, difficulty hearing as well, but he's so determined. Despite despite his disabilities, he's he's done so much for for youth. Um, and I mean, I know that God is is going to bless him greatly. Is blessing him greatly in everything that he's doing. It's just going to be amazing to see what the Lord does with this ministry in the future. Just because of Jared's heart is so genuine of just wanting people and wanting Jesus to be encountered by the love of God to for the Lord to bring that healing and that redemption that was brought into his life to bring it into others. I've grown a lot in his ministry. Um, I've been able, I used to be very nervous in front of being in a crowd and now that I've been doing more 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 performances when in ministry um, I'll be able to express myself more through music and, and through the word of God through to these people that we go and minister. He always says that the bigger the platform, the bigger responsibility. And it's something that is that is true because when you're out there, you have, a, have to have a good testimony. It's not for other people to see, but for God, because we want them to come to the Lord. What I remember the most about Jared, who I had back in 2003 in sixth grade and then football in seventh grade and eighth grade, was his determination. Uh, although he was the smallest guy out there, he had the biggest heart. He never backed down from any challenge, whether it was in the classroom or whether it was on the field. He took every challenge like a new adventure. He didn't give up. He never gave up. That was one thing that I was always envied about Jared, that he would never give up in any challenge. Talking about Jared, I used to be here in 2004 whenever good athletes that came through us and fed him to Nicky Rowe. He played the line. He recovered an important fumble against Lincoln. And because of that, we're able to stop the drive and, and win the game because of Jared. You know what? I saw a young, hungry, young man. I call him the little giant. And the reason why I cared so much about him is because he was hungry. He didn't have the ability, didn't have the sight, didn't have the ears, didn't have the body as a pastor or leader or a preacher, but he had the heart, he had the desire, he had the will. And you know what? God looks for that. The Bible says in Psalms 14 verse 2 that the God of the universe looks for one that's willing to walk and understand who God is. He may not have the ears or the eyes or the body, but he had the heart and the desire to understand God. And I just want to thank God for Jared. Jared's doing great things. He has youth connection. He gets involved in our community, in our, in our middle schools, in our high schools. And what he's doing, he's changing the world. And if Jared can change the world, you can change the world too. And I'm proud of Jared, and I'm proud of what he's doing. I've been part of everything that he does, and I support him 100%. And I just want to tell you guys, if you're a pastor or a youth pastor is watching, you should invite Jared to your church, because he has a great story to share. I believe in the power of prayer. I always go walk to the cross always looking for answers and guidance for my journey. I always have confidence wherever I go. This reminds me of a Bible scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. My loving Heavenly Father, Chief, if you know my heart and you know where I need to go in life, Lord, I ask you to guide my steps and to guide my heart. Every single day, Lord, I know that I will put my trust in you and I put my hope and I declare it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I have a lot to be thankful for. Later on tonight, I'm looking forward to attend 
that you connection bank giving to all my friends I'm very excited, you know, being here today. I'm very thankful that we are in a season of faith giving. And I'm very thankful in the bottom of my heart that you invested your time to help me. You invested your, your, your time in, in your heart for this ministry youth connection. We've been very faithful in this ministry for five years. I started with ministry 2012, a little church in Donna, Texas. Now we are here today, continue to launch more and more. We're growing. And I just feel the Lord has laid a word in my heart. And I just feel something that, you know, the beginning of our life, we were in, a, we were in our mother's womb. Before we, we were, you know, brought to this world, the Bible says that, you know, you, you existed in God's heart before the creation. You, you were designed for a purpose. And I, I want to talk to message today. Able to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, able to God. You are able to God. I know a lot of times that we have, you know, so many, you know, mistakes. A lot of times we got so many, you know, you know, um, things that we can't even comprehend. Why did this happen? Why we allow so much circum bad to happen to us? But God that loves you so, so much. The Bible says in John 15, 13, that greater love have no man in this who laid down his life for his friends. That Jesus who, who, who gave his life for you. For you could have a relationship with him. If I can give you a short story about my life, I was the kind of guy in high school, I would compare myself to a lot of people. I wish I was a strong guy. I wish I was, I was tall, you know, I wish I was, you know, I was always comparing myself, but yet God spoke to me. You know, he, he spoke to me, you know, he said, Jared, I designed you, I created you. You're not an accident, and you're not a mistake. A lot of times that we're not an accident, we're not a mistake. The Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 14, you are wonderfully and beautifully made. You are made by God. Your destiny will take you to places you never intended to go. Your destiny will take you the places you never imagined where you go. When I was in high school, I was working at McDonald's, and I was playing sports, I was just, you know, just being a regular guy. But I never dreamed of being a preacher, I never dreamed of doing youth conference or helping out with this connection, or I never dreamed I was just 
if a regular guy, you know, just felt cheap on my own identity, of just felt cheap on my own purpose. But yet when Jesus took a hold of my life, when I was 17 years old, I'll never forget, when I accepted Christ, 17 years old, my life been, been transformed. I am here today, 27 years old, I continue to be faithful, I continue to pursue His calling and His purpose in ministry. Because I may be, you know, I have my battles and I have my struggles, but I, I believe that I am able to God. I believe I can do all things for Christ to give me that strength. You are here today because I believe it's a divine appointment. You're here today because God has called you and did the ministry, you connection, because I will, I will not be able to do it by myself. But you're here today. I never knew I would make, I'll meet Juan Mercado. I never knew I'll meet Moses or Johnny or I never knew I'll, I'll meet you no know, Rena. You no, know, that was all divine appointment. God will place people in your path to help you, to, to and, and enable you to, to, to do some great and mighty things. What did you do today, man? All I did, bro, today, well, was wake up and um, got uh, was doing some homework, man, because, I mean, school, you know how school is, man, it's pretty hectic. Always, you know, trying to ruin our fun, our free time with them homework. So, can't relate, man, I don't go to school. You don't go to school? Not right What happened, man? You dropped out or what? Nah, I'm barely going back in January. <laughs> well, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what time you finish, as long as you... You know, get through it, right? Yeah, it took like seven years off. Hey, man. It's good. To... It's the perfect time of God, man. Oh, yeah. Perfect number. You got seven. this. Hey, guys. What's going on, Jerry? What's going on, Jerry? No, I'm doing good, man. How have I been? All right, man. Doing pretty good, man. Awesome. You know, um, if okay, I can talk to you guys, there's something that's bothering my heart. Yeah, yeah dude, for sure. Maybe just set a spot right here for me. What's up, man? No, <laughs> you know, I've been hanging out with a buddy of mine, you know, been past a couple of times, and I really want him to know God. And he's very atheist, you know, he believes in science and everything. And it's been a bit, been, been a bit of a struggle. And I'm wondering, you guys have any advice for me? Well, yeah, man. I mean, first of all, we, you know, before you even speak to this man, this buddy of yours, you want to, you want to pray. You know, first you want to get into, you know, a communication with God. Allow Him to use you in a great way. You know, the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit, you know, when we, we, when we don't have any words to say or we blank out, we know that the, Lord, the, the Holy Spirit Himself intercedes, right? And we know that through the words that you speak that come out of your lips, you know, will come great power, you know? So we could speak and you, you could try to talk to Him, you could try to convince Him, but, but if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, Jerry, then there will be no effect. You have to allow the Holy True. Spirit to use you, bro, um, and pray. Because I mean, it's we cannot change that heart. We cannot change a person. Um, we cannot change a person's heart, man. Which is why we have to, you know, with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to change the man's heart. And mm -hmm. even though he doesn't want to accept right now, or he doesn't want to, you know, to believe. You know, as long as you're speaking to him, he's the heart, man. You know, it's crazy how the heart works. The heart, even though, you know, we don't, we don't want to accept things or whatever, it doesn't matter. But what we hear, what we see, what we, everything that, you know, that we're around in, our heart takes it in. Mm. It's like our environment, it affects who we are, you know, it molds us. So as you continue to speak to him, you know, you're, you're, you're planting a seed in his heart, you know, and of course, you know, a seed doesn't, doesn't bloom, doesn't, you know, grow quickly. It takes time, right? It takes little, little, little by little, little by little. I really like what Josh said, to always allow the Holy Spirit to guide me, you know, when I have a conversation with someone. So, what, what do you think, Johnny, from your point of view, when you talk to people? Um, I agree with Josh, man. Um, everything that we say is uh, in some way, shape, or form a seed that we plant into someone's heart. Um, and I agree with the whole prayer thing, man. Like, that is rock-solid stuff. Um, I believe that intercession is the forerunner uh, to all evangelism. And that's what you're doing. Um, but before we can plant any seed, uh, we need to till the dirt. And that's exactly what prayer does. It tills the dirt of our hearts. Uh, the Word of God says that God can actually go and change a man's heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. And um, it also says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, man. And so you can be 
you can rest assured knowing that God is listening to your prayers every time you're praying for your friend, every time you're pouring out your heart. And I'm not talking about just prayer. I'm talking about intercession where you're, you're, you're pouring your heart out for him. And let me tell you, man, uh, I know that you have a burden for this guy, but I'm pretty sure that your burden isn't as great as God's burden for him to be saved. So you and God are probably on the same page. And so what you need to do now is uh, do what the Word of God says, man. The Word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So whenever you're with him, uh, I'm not saying to shove word down his throat, but what I am saying is that you live out the word. You know, when he sees that Jesus lives in you, that it's no longer Jared who lives, but it's Christ who lives in you, it will start spawn. Uh, faith is the response to that, man. His faith will grow when he sees you moving and loving in a way that he's never experienced it. Because the truth is we're all searching for love. We all are. Either we're searching for it in the wrong places but the truth is Jesus is love that's the love that we've been searching for all our lives and all you gotta do is show it all you gotta do is love on the guy I really appreciate you guys you know allowing you know me to continue to pray and I have a Holy Spirit to, to guide my heart and I believe the Lord is going to use me to plant a seed in this man so I uh, really appreciate it, though. I'll see you guys soon, man. High five. All right, man. All right, take care, man. Take, easy, man. take care, bro. We know bro. what we said, you know. Yeah, helps, All right, bro. take care, man. Have a good one. Anyways, man, so... Yeah, dude, that's what I was doing throughout the day, dude, but... I mean... Hey, man, just continue your school, dude. Don't don't give up. Just pursue it, man, until you finish. Yeah. I don't know about all that, but... We'll see, man, because... I like to sleep in, bro. <laughs> Same. Yeah. But I mean, priorities, bro. Priorities. Yeah. Having failed to discredit the man, I decided to go directly to the source. I knew there had to be something in here. Luckily, my wife kept plenty of Bibles around the house, so I grabbed a couple. I was determined to prove them wrong. I was determined to prove that I was the one who knew what was right. Interesting. Jericho is northeast of Jerusalem, and we don't typically say down when we refer to going north. But in Luke 10.30, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Jerusalem is 2,500 feet above sea level. Therefore, when one leaves Jerusalem in Palestine, he goes down to go anywhere in the area. That would mean Jesus was right, the way he said it. Fascinating. I had a feeling I was going to be here for a while. I opened to the back of the book to try to find my way through, and I found a piece of paper. To my surprise, my wife had written a prayer for our family and kept it in the back of the book. She really was a strong woman of God, no doubt about that. Of course, I wasn't going to admit that I found it, so I put it right back where I got it.
Exodus 3, 3. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Surely that's got to be impossible. Let's see. The acacia bush is known for making good charcoal. If a vent happened to spew hot gases, it could have alighted and appeared to have burned without end. How could he have known to be there at that exact time? Exodus 14.21, the parting of the Red Sea. Wait a minute, wait a minute, no, no. I know this one. I remember hearing something about earthquakes under the ocean. Tectonic shifting in the ocean's floor can cause waters to recede. Proper... wait, the wind condition... wait. What does this mean? things were possible. They were all possible. And I was just proving the book right. My mind was spinning with scripture and stories. It felt as if an unseen force were waging war inside my head. I didn't have a chance to talk to my friend Derek. There was just so much work to do. But I know God is working in his heart. Tonight I am at the Connect Conference Fall 2017 ministering what the altar call. You know, there was a moment of, of not what with God anymore. But yet, because of Him, I found strength. Because of him, I find I found connection. If every time when, when I feel discouraged, I, I always feel, why God, you made me this way? Why do you make me going through all that broken back and surgery? And yet God said, I love you. And I want to use you for my purpose. I want to connect with you. Because I have a plan for, for your life. But I'm still here today. So I may, I may be I may be disabled in the world, I'm able to come. I want to encourage you tonight, young people. Take that step of faith. Come. The, the prayer team is ready. We're ready to pray over you. We're ready to, to talk to you and to believe that there's freedom and change in the name. You know, come. Run. Run to him. Run. You keep calling right now. What are you bearing right here tonight? What are you bearing right here tonight? And Jesus, you are here.
What what do you want from me? What what am I supposed to do here? I don't I don't understand. Everything that I've ever known is a lie. I I thought I thought that I was that I was smart, you know, and I was proud of that. And now what? Now Now you telling me that I was wrong? I can't, I can't. You are talking to me, aren't you? You really are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I surrender. I can't fight you anymore. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings revelation. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say revelation. When you walk with God, you die of your understanding. And he gives you revelation to see what he wants you to see. Not what you want to see. Not what you want to understand. It's not about you anymore. You no longer live. It's God that lives within you. And when you allow God to move in you, you begin to understand the greater purpose. I think the problem for this generation is that we don't allow the Holy Spirit to, to take us to the next level. We try to understand. You cannot understand God in your own human understanding. You need the Holy Spirit. Hey guys, what's up? Come on over hey, here. Hey Adriana, I just like to introduce you to my to my uh, good friend. Hello. Adam. Hey. Lovely, nice to meet you. Likewise. What do you think, Adriana? You know about the, the video ministry. How's that going? Well, we've grown a lot this past few years since when we first started with Youth 101. I remember when we used to just have maybe 36 views, 56 at the max. Now we have 300, 500 views on average, and now we have more people on the team. That definitely helps. So now. One person does a video every week of the month. So now that makes like 52 videos a year. And you know what helps is that like every member that's in the Youth Connection has friends or, or you know, church people and family that they're going to be like, oh, what's this about? And then they're going to be telling everybody else and then it's going to be spreading little by little. I know you, we know each other for a really good year or so. And what's your feedback, you know, about your experience about the ministry? Well, see, the thing about ministry is that we can't get comfortable and just settle for what we think is enough. We need to continue to grow and, and seek more ways to, to find God. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. to, to experience Him in different ways, in new ways every day, and to learn how to fall in love and to learn how to truly worship Him. Growing means that we need to allow God to speak to us and not try to take over his His plan for us, you know a lot of times we try to take over but we and we don't allow him to be God and that's That's what I feel, you know going back in the beginning of a ministry Even when I found Jesus, I, oh, I did I did a lot of walking and I have struggled looking for a ride I can't drive and, and all, all I've been doing walking. I believe that the Lord plays you and Adriana to help me. I can never do it by myself because of you and Adriana, you guys helped me so much in the ministry. And I just want to encourage you to give you a firing word though, because God can use you in a mighty way. Even though that, you know, it, it, you, you'll feel like, you know, you, but God is using you. And I'm very appreciative for both of you, all you're doing from, you know, greater fame in your connection ministry. And now I'm not walking alone. Now, when I'm walking, now I have you and all the Connection team is helping me and guiding me. So we're, 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 we are working together at Unity. All in due time. And speaking of time, um, what time you got to get home? Actually, I believe I need to go now because it is a 45-minute drive and it's getting kind of late. So. Yeah. All right. Mm. Um, you guys want to wrap up with like a prayer before we all leave? Yeah, that sounds good. You want prayer? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for another wonderful day that you've blessed us with, God. We thank you for each and everything that you allow us, God, to, to do for you and for your ministry, God. We ask you, God, to 
not only help us grow in love and unity, God, but to help us grow spiritually, God, for your kingdom, God, and to bring people into your word, God, and, and for people to know, God, that we will continue in faith, God, and we will continue pushing forward, God, to, to reach what we need to reach, God, for your purpose, through your purpose, God. And, and I ask you for Adriana, God, for for everything that she's done, God, and please continue to use her, God, as well as Jared, God, and for us to keep pushing forward, God, as, along with everybody else, God, that that's for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, um, it's really good catching up with you, Adriana. I know me and Abby got to go. It's going to be a long trip. Yeah, it was really nice meeting you. Thank yeah. you for having me over. Likewise. Right, God bless you. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Mm -hmm. I forgot my Bible. Uh-oh. Amen. Earlier this morning, I received a phone call from Derek. He found Father's Friday. He wanted to share something with me. Hey, Jared. Hey, Derek. Good How's it going, you, man? man? It's Great, good to man. see you. Awesome. Hey, listen, man. Uh, thanks for meeting me. I've kind of got something... Uh, Something I gotta talk to you about. Again. <laughs> Seems like I'm always coming to you for advice these days, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, so something uh, life-changing happened to me yesterday. And um, I surrendered, bro. Wow, awesome, man. I finally surrendered. I, I couldn't fight it anymore. You have no idea how hard I fought. And I'm a little ashamed to say it, but I mean, I... I was looking in the book to try to disprove the Bible with the things that I knew, with science, with logic, and it had the opposite effect. The things that happened in the Bible, they're real. This whole faith and spirituality thing, it's real. But you knew that, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you were just trying to get me to see it. And I, I wasn't listening, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. No worries. You know, I, I even, and I'm ashamed to admit this too, but I even went as far as to try and discredit you. I thought that maybe, you know, you weren't, I thought nobody could be that nice, you know? I mean, why would you care about what I believe? But every time I've seen you, you just keep trying to bring me closer to God. And, and so I went and I asked a bunch of people that you know, <laughs> like, what kind of person you were. And uh, they all had nothing but nice things to say about you. Like, it was it was genuine, man. So, so I'm sorry for that too. But uh, what do I do now? You know, that's what I want to know. I, I I feel it. I feel something moving inside me. I feel it stirring, but I don't I don't know what to do. The first thing you have to do, Derek, is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Are you ready to do that prayer? You know what? I am. Oh, I'm, man. I'm ready, bro. How do, okay? How do I? All you have to How do, do I do this? If we pee after me. Okay. All right. Do I do I bow my head or do I clasp my hands or something or <laughs> just anything a... that you feel comfortable, buddy? Okay. All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you. I come to you. Searching and looking for answers. Searching and looking for answers. Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you know my heart. You know what I've been through in my lifetime. You know what I've been through in my lifetime. But Jesus. But Jesus. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my heart. I want you to be, to be my father. I want you to be my father. I believe that my name. I believe that my name. Is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus. Jesus. I accept, I accept you in my heart. I accept you into my heart. Thank you for, for forgiving me. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. The angel was shouting in heaven. <sighs> you know what? I feel like this huge weight has been lifted off of me. I'm sorry, man. I, uh, I grow man seeing another man cry. That's not, uh, you know. Well, the Bible says that come to me all over where you're heavy burden and I'll give you rest. new day you know what I got to show you some of that stuff that I learned man you are gonna love it well 
the Lord doing great things, man. And and big day forward, you're gonna feel a lot of great changes, and you're gonna have a lot of great friends. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a great journey for you, man. And this is where we say, uh, "Amen," right? Amen, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jerry. Likewise, Jerry. If I hadn't seen your strength of faith, I, I never would have looked twice. I never would have considered it. But you know, something you said to me last time we spoke really stuck with me. You said that he was knocking at the door of my heart. Yes. And he wanted me to let him in. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stop thinking about those words. Well, I hope you and I hope God can forgive me for being such a fool. But no more. I'm living for him, for him from now on. There's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. The Bible says in John 15, 13, A greater love have no man than this who lay down his life for his friends. Jesus who laid down his life for you on the cross. That's why we need to continue to keep pressing forward and pursuing him. The cross. How did you know I went to the cross? God, speak to me about you earlier today when I was walking to go visit you. I felt like everything was divine appointment. Divine appointment, that means that that it was it was it that God meant for it to happen, right? Yes. Wow. Wow. Uh, baby steps, man. I'll come to it. I'll, <laughs> I'll learn. Whoa. Well, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a journey, man. But it's gonna be a lot of you know promises, and you know God gonna guide you through the Bible, and He's gonna speak to you though in the scriptures. I can't wait. Awesome, I can't Derek. wait, and for once, I'm not fighting. Thank you, brother. Likewise, Derek. Thank you. Awesome, man. Wanna go get? Wanna grab something to eat? Yeah, man. Like, Let's likewise. go. I decided to continue my studies and learn that being disabled can mean more than the physical. We place on ourselves disabling things like doubt, anger, and fear that can keep us all from realizing our greater purpose. I know now that God is able to do all things, and He brings with Him peace and understanding, so we may know that with God, nothing is impossible. Maybe you don't know what it means to have peace, have joy, have fullness, strength for the journey. I want to encourage you to, you know, to, to, to for me, to, to, for you, uh, to listen to a prayer. Repeat the prayer after me. For you can accept Jesus into your heart. Believe that your name is found in the Lamb Book of Life. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you hurting. I come to you with brokenness. Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. I believe you have a plan, a destiny for my life. I believe that my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Jesus, speak to me, for I am yours. I declare it, and Jesus, mighty name, amen, amen. So I give, give, give God a shout out. Let this be a seat of revival, Lord. 
Let this be a seed, Lord, that starts a revolution in our schools, in our homes and family, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit just come upon this place, Lord, and use us greatly for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says, Well, that is my story. I know the journey is long. God will continue to do a great work in my life. I continue to keep pressing forward, pursuing the calling that He placed in my life. Your life is a story. God writes each day. He wants to use your story to influence other people. There is so much work to do. And I know God can enable you to do greater things. The journey just began. It doesn't matter when you're limited. It doesn't matter the challenges or the abilities you go through. We are all able to God. Okay, wow. Well, I uh, continue it. When I say action, count to three and then begin, okay? okay. Action. So, what inspired you Cut. to... I didn't oh, count. count. <laughs> I do want to accept him into my life. I do believe he makes a big change with uh, friends and... <laughs> I was just finishing talking Hang to on, wait for the action. I do, I really- Wait for the action. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father. Um, you need to repeat after me. <laughs> Heavenly Father. Thank you for asking. Uh, I did want- Cut. Um, is this where I tell him? Say what you just said again. Who, me? Yeah. I don't remember what I said. And I wanted to see if maybe you could help him and give him, um, tell him, let him know something. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, reset. <laughs> don't use this as a blooper. A blooper reel. No. Woo! <laughs> Pray to God and seek him. But his faith isn't that great, and maybe he might, uh, he might be able to change if it's coming from yeah. you. Oh, yeah. You said buff his face. I said, I said Reset. face. Uh, <laughs> they both have script. Absolutely, I'd be happy to talk to him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Action. Absolutely. Um, do you have some time? Yeah. I can Action. Absolutely. Uh, I'd be loved to talk to him. Cut. You said, I'd be loved to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Action. Absolutely. Cut. What did I say? Nothing. <laughs> Look at this crazy lady. <laughs> this isn't even the comedy. <laughs> so, focus. Focus, guys. <laughs> Action. Shall we have a seat? Cut. Sorry, my finger was on the lens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Likewise. Hold on, cut, cut, because the Bible, he has to take it. Oh. <laughs> Let's do it again. 
Uh, okay, that has to all be done in one take, so you're gonna have to say the prayer again. Sophie, why are you so much higher than me? Oh, uh, because you're heavier than me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can do it, wait, so um, do it. Do you wanna? Oh, I'm taking video. Oh, you're taking video? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's very, it's something to. I'm sorry, I forgot the word that I was going to say. Don't forget to smile. <laughs> <laughs> I was very honored when he chose, uh, or yeah, so chose me to, or spoke with me. I'm oh, sorry, Lori. Yeah, so, um, well, I'll keep you updated. And, um, wait, are you still filming? Yes. Watch you. This is all B roll. Actors ready? Ready. Yes, ready. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'm the one that starts, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for everything that you allow. Can we, I'm so sorry. <laughs> free, free. <laughs> okay. <Good. laughs> Amen. 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 All right, uh, Jared. Are you walking home? <laughs> well, I thought you, I thought you were going to say... <laughs> oh, no, I got confused. I thought you were going to say what well, you guys already said. It, right? it wrap up, it's late. And, and oh, we already did. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm just so hungry right now. I'm thinking about chili. Like oh, Thank <laughs> you.